description of the platform. Oh, okay.
three elected officials, 100%. So there's there's no um, cherry picking here. So no, no, no. Well, well, let, okay. let me finish my statement because what you made reference to is that this would be cherry picking from one elected official to another. Right. What I find in this email communication is the new interim director of the Department of Transportation, mm -hmm. who provides a very detailed, thorough account of expenditures and projects, uh, which is, I think, uh, put in a good capsule. I think that it's very condensed in the format that it is just two pages, two pieces of paper. And um, I think- Two pieces of paper on both sides. Yes, it has to be reduplicated and put into the packet to be mailed out. Correct. Okay, unless you guys are gonna put the court in the cost. Might I interject into the discussion, please, Mr. Chair? Um, well, I'm not seeing this particular document, and it, it, it's, it was, was it, I think, initially addressed to uh, all of our representatives, and this is exactly uh, and, and we're, okay. Uh, that's your response from the, from the DOT okay. head, no, which I, is good I, for us. I, I'm not trying to argue the point of who's in it or who's not in it. I guess I'd be interested more about the metrics, if I might continue on the metrics for the actual expense. Um, the, the expenses are just one part of the problem. Okay. Okay, what I'm looking at is, yes, and this particular item here, and I'm not disputing the item itself. So it's good I'm just talking yeah. about the item that's being presented. Yes, it may cover three or four different elected officials. Not a problem. That's the uh, month of January. In the month of February, is uh, Councilman Paul going to come in? Or is uh, uh, Rep Pine, Rep Capanillo, Senator Sparrow, and all the other people that may come to this board, are they going to come back to me in February, March, April, and May and say, hey, look, I want something in? Well, That's what I'm trying to eliminate because we as a board cannot put other elected officials' items in minutes on a regular basis. And if we do it for one, then we're going to cause a precedence and people are going to expect it. And then that's cost out of our budget fund again. So that's my take on it. And I think there's something we may need to address with the rest of the board. And I'm glad we're bringing it up because uh, we took, an, in my opinion now, we took an exceptional policy on one item that we did. Um, there was another item that I actually got a meeting from the commission that said it was okay. However, it had to be reformatted to eliminate some language, the language of reporting to whoever had whatever I believe it was. Okay. Um, but the question came up, even from the commission to me, um, if people are going to do this, this is not an avenue to distribute information like that from different electric people. And that's, that's what the signal was from the commission to me. What uh, I can also say in response is that uh, A, I'm not an elected official, uh, B, it's not coming from an elected official, and C, it's coming from a board member. And what I can do is it, it's, it's very simplistic to say for dissemination purposes, it's inclusive of a particular representative has ownership of the document. Mm -hmm. And communication came from Brenda Morioka, whereby he even said, uh, she's from? he even said that it would be uh, uh, is from. permissible. He's the new interim director for the Department of Transportation. Okay. And uh, his concurrence was that uh, it to be of value and that uh, he permitted this to be distributed tonight. And I merely had made a request that I think it's beneficial to the community of art of these of these subject matters. Now as a board member, mm -hmm. I believe I have the ability per statute to merely make a request for submission to the minutes at any board meeting meeting while it's being conducted. And so at this stage I want to move on. But I wanted to just apprise you that I felt this to be of of um, well 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 condensed to, to do that, minimize cost. I think I think it's very uh, uh, manageable and uh, informative. So outside of that, the committee report for uh, future matters was to have our elected officials here for representation. I know we have uh, representation from Rep. Pine's office, and, I be, and if she's here. Under this time allotment of six o'clock, though, I have on the legislative committee another item, and that is the Farrington Highway Flyover. Right. The reason of the importance of this document being included in the minutes is that you're going to find very interesting information. The city and county came to a meeting the other month, or was UH West of who said, 
we can do a flyover of Farrington over North South Road. In this document, you have the State Department of Transportation saying they can't do a flyover North South Road over Farrington. So it's very applicable when we look at the Farrington Highway flyover that I believe that we should take some kind of uh, action to notify our elected officials that can garner the monies to make it reality and make it happen that the flyover explanation of that, of that uh, 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 difference between the state and the city being able to, to really take an intersection that if we don't start voicing some concern over it, um, you know, I think it's going to be a lot of backups being the traffic light signal when we can actually have a flyover. And when it was mentioned by UH West Wahoo that the future calls for a flyover, I, I thought that it was good to have that clarification in here as well. And then moving on, finally, legislative package uh, would be, again, all the uh, elected officials, um, including uh, Council Minipol, uh, to come forward with the governor. Any, any, any recommendations uh, to, to make that to the board at large? And we can uh, have what's called a legislative package. And we were to, by request of uh, board member Gary Bautista, roughly three months ago, he had asked that the uh, bills of which are still alive, um, these bills are by reference, also in Representative Cobbler's report, and I'm not gonna ask that that be in the minutes. I'm not interested in having the four bills of explanation uh, coming from Representative Cobbler because that, to me, does cross a little bit on the other side of the gray matter because it does just that. These are the, that was community legislative bills. It's the package representing all of our elected officials and because it's coming from Rep. Cavanaugh in first person, that I don't think is appropriate. So I'm going to ask that that document not be put in the minutes. But in discussion, if we're going to discuss and follow through, this is going to be referenced. So I hope there's going to be clarity on this that for the four bills out there to do again okay. condense material, it happens to be in this document to to uh, to further bring it to conclusion. So it was chair, uh, that would be my uh, uh, my report. The, the actions. Okay. Uh, just a quick question on that. The actions um, uh, that you're looking for from the board um, to address cities and uh, state uh, for the uh, flight, okay. is that um, something you're looking for us as far as a uh, letter? You know, Absolutely. Yes. Okay. And um, uh, it's something to that effect, again, that would have to be level one, obviously. But, um, is that going to be the right avenue to go through? Uh, the reason I say that is you know, maybe it's something that uh, needs to be directed to or ensure that it's with uh, UNCO or uh, at least on uh, the tip as far as the funding. You know, because once that is earmarked, then you can put the election. You're right. The director is the director going to be vested. Right. It's Ampo, it's, it's the city and county, it's the mayor. Right. Um, it's even CCing President right. Logan. Uh, but, but you're right, it, it is also Ampo being on the tip of the tip because it's going to be, it's, uh, if it's in the future of, of the, uh, not the other government plan as we know today, um, that's the, and that's what has to be expedited. Right. And, and uh, I would imagine, and again, if it's not there, that's going to be our first step. Yeah, so let's let's bang on the door a little bit and let the board discuss it. Let's bring it up. I'd like to have you entertain that in committee report. Uh, Scott, in reference to Ompo, uh, is any of this stuff? I mean, I haven't been in the meeting lately, but uh, is any of this stuff coming up? Uh, reference to the uh, trial or the other issue? No, for sure. Uh, uh, there's nothing that's going to be reacted by the meeting. Yeah, it's going to be down the line. Yeah. Uh, he can put in all the bills what he wants, but I think he's going to go to the next sequence of, uh, of discussion. Yeah. Okay. Let me give a response to that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Regarding flyover, um, I guess what you asked me about the issues that uh, Board Member Berg has introduced of the agenda of being the flyover and also some of the issues in that document you have to submit for this flyover. No, no, well, um, actually anything that involves our community area, okay. if it's being addressed on, uh, or at home poll, it be placed on the tip. Uh, you know, at least some recognition from that level, it's money in the funds. Okay. And then we can, uh, if it's identified
aside there, then we can look at the officials to follow up and get approved. Does that sound right? Well, you guys know the process better than me. Hi, hey. How you doing? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. But, uh, okay, you understand what I'm saying. You guys know the process a lot better than I do. So, uh, uh, what Ann just bring up the state, what we're talking about is uh, uh, a couple of bills um, that Tom uh, wants to address. Uh, also, the North and South Road flyover and uh, a couple of other issues, uh, which we're going to discuss. Of course, we're still in committee right now. But we're going to discuss uh, a little bit, hopefully not too much. But uh, just to get a point across. But my thought on that was we got to make sure that it's at least being addressed for own folk to identify funding. And that's where I was asking Scott about. So I'm just trying to bring you up to speed. Yeah. See, we could, we could, chair, we could actually entertain, because um, it's on the agenda, giving our uncle captain the representative actual direction to take with him. And that's why he could bring that request to the CAP committee through the process to the Apple Policy Committee. Again, we can take advantage of Chair Asparo of all that Apple for one year. We have that golden opportunity to take an own elected official who happens to be chair of the Apple Policy Committee and utilize that connectivity from CAP to that chairmanship and say, let's look at this flyover. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm interested in. I want to make sure that we get that action on the Apple. Well, we can do it tonight. Other, other than that, and, and, you know, we got our uh, committee guy here for a vote. And, and other than that, once we make sure that it's identified with funding, then we can push our officials to get it. And yes, that's a question. Uh, Farrington, Farrington Highway City Council. Farrington is where uh, it intersects with North South Road. City Council. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and the state. The, we were referencing. Um, we were referencing Brendan Morioka's response. Good to see you. Email. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, and he, he brings up the fact that we had brought up earlier. We actually had more to actually say. We wanted that flyover, but it was North South Road going over there. Yeah. And, and he's just he's explaining here that it's, it's, not, it's yeah. not possible. So when we heard the U H West of Waffle. Uh, Scott, I apologize. We cut you short. Mm -hmm. we want to, we want to this right, 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 right. Okay. Now let me just we yes. explain why the state is because of the project. It's so close to the age one that the, the distance between the intersection and the age one is within that what's called a one mile. Mm -hmm. They need to have a one mile for the greater ratio to get federal funding to the criteria for the guidance. So uh, that's why the state is involved in moving it for us. We're in a
the question that I had was the uh, inclusion with us and or what other, what other uh, things are coming up in local that we are, I guess, earmarked for or if there's anything on the board again. Given the role of ONPO is to, um, in, in, in the, and where I'm involved with ONPO, the Citizen Advisory Committee, um, our role is really to, to, to study uh, emerging trends, uh, necessary uh, uh, roads and infrastructure improvements, and to advise the policy to take action on it. And so currently, I mean, some of the big issues of late have been presentations from people representing the different technologies uh, that would be on the, uh, you know, whether it's going to be a those hybrid rail or whether it's going to be a rubber tire bus or whatever it's going to be on the fixed guideway. Um, there's been some discussions about public-private partnerships, but it's generally um, onpo discussions are generally pretty pretty broad. Um, I guess I would submit that what's most relevant right now is making sure that um, our those representatives, uh, Pine and since Ann has a relationship with the board, and Senator Sparrow, all keep an eye on the funding of some key infrastructure improvements. Um, I would also submit that it would be really informative to the electorate to hear from the very person who's in charge of these at the state level, Brandon Morio. And I would also submit, uh, Chair Hargrave, that we have a kind of an interesting letter here where um, the esteemed director, Brennan Morioka, has addressed to all of our elected officials the key things we should be aware of. And this is a really nice summary, and it's not all to get you know, a couple of pages of an essay from the director yeah. uh, for your particular district. So um, I, I would also, if we have to maybe look at food budget, if this is that big of a uh, mailing expense, this is the very stuff that the, if the electorate is not aware of, um, they're not going to call um, and, and, and speak with uh, this member of the audience, uh, with Representative Pine or Ann, to say, hey, make sure you support these things. So I, I, again, I would just say, now, have, were this to have been from a representative or from a senator, I can see that that might be uh, something that we might want to avoid. But this is all an actual representation. I wasn't trying to you know, take it out to say that I didn't get it there. I'm just saying I didn't want to start a precedence. You know, later on down the road, I get everybody and their brother and uncle trying to put in something that they have You know, and that becomes a false factor to this world. You know, and we're uh, already getting hit with X number of dollars for the minutes every month. Whatever that is, and you're the budget guy, so you know. Yeah, so I hear what you're saying, and I think that's important. It's important for you to be aware that people don't use the budget right. for personal advancement. Yeah. However, if, this, if the director of DOT specifically addresses our concerns, it's very really nice for people to address. I agree. I agree. And again, I'm not against that. It's just the idea of the second time. Yeah, thanks. Originally, the comment on that. Unless it's on the agenda. It's a general discussion. Hey, I'm going to get any kind of flyers that address it. You know, issues that we want to push across. Yeah, and, and that's exactly what I was going to Coming from uh, DOT, okay. even though it, it was addressed to several of our elected officials, um, is why we're looking at that. However, it has to be discussed in the meeting department. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And, and we're all aware of that. So, yeah. Right hand for work. You know, good clarification for that because that's exactly where we're going. But again, uh, my whole emphasis and comment for this whole thing is just to make sure that uh, we didn't set a precedence that has everybody in there trying to put something attached to our minutes. Okay, um, what do you got about Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, any other board members, uh, committee?
Um, should I have to, uh, the traffic and transportation just then? Maybe I should do a little something about the uh, Yes, uh, you know what I'd like to do, and let me just add this in, in reference to one, if you have an opportunity to uh, insert things that's going to affect our community, uh, if it's not there already, then hopefully uh, you and me, our rep, is uh, able to notice that, hey, you guys able to think about the people here when you pass this or whatever. Um, please try to interject that and put them in that are in the back of the community or in our community and residents. We're here to see the voice of the community. We want to see different things. Hopefully, if we can be in specific areas with uh, Tom, the legislator, you know, Mon uh, you know, Mitchell's in. Uh, planning, you know, whatever comes up as we see these things, we have to be a little bit proactive to make sure that we're addressing it. Okay, excellent. Um, so with respect to Alpo, then things of relevance to us, um, and it came before City Council today, and we'll hear a report tonight, and we've heard presentations at the Alpo CAC meetings on the alternative technologies that would travel on the fixed guidance whether it would be a, this, pilot, uh, uh, this this rubber rail type bus system or whether it would be a fixed rail. And so that's been the general theme of ongoing late. And there's been a recently formed subcommittee of which I am chair on public-private partnerships. And so we're currently doing some research with the end goal of having a non-biased pro and con report on PPPs and their roles Mm -hmm. And so that all is something we should all uh, be aware of. And in fact, uh, Mr. Chair, maybe tonight in the meeting when I do my report, I can do a quick and formal show of hands in the audience to get the general pulse of the audience about their feelings on PDP as a whole. So that's, that's the big thing about it. It's all about deliberating and creating a discussion. And so that's over the themes of if, if we can. Uh, Keep that to a minimum as far as discussion. 37 years old. You know, okay, it sounds good to me. Okay. Um, and that's really, there's something else to report with Bonco. I think more to come, especially as this subcommittee meets. And um, we have some good presentations next week. And if anyone's available to come around next week, Wednesday, at the, um, at the City Hall, on the Holiday, uh, 3.30. You know, it's just always open for public. I've been trying to videotape, and I think in a month behind on getting them off, and I'm trying to get those up on YouTube. Uh, uh, those, those things that are specific to Ella, Ella Beach area is really what uh, I think we should be concerned with. Yep. And, and of course, uh, reference to Lompo, anything that affected our, uh, our major operators, we can get our head down to this. We are the only one. And if I can add to that, may I comment? Um, Referencing back to uh, Brad Morioka's uh, dialogue communication, <coughs> he explains contraflow on Port Rico Road. And he says it's ill advised. Now, there's been a thrust in this community for some time to get Port Rico Road at six lanes to be contra. It was even discussed when it was at four lanes. But uh, even in the full configuration of six lanes, we have a response to the Director of Department of Transportation. And again, that's, that's where you know, I'm just emphasizing follow up on when you mentioned specific evidence. This is, this, yeah. you can't get any more specific. Yeah. Right. And, and just a quick question on that. Did, did he identify any uh, direct concerns of why he thought it was still alive? Yes, there's about three points that are in the report. Mm -hmm. Is it arguable? Uh, no. I don't think it's monetary. I don't think it has aesthetic value. I think it's purely has to do with allowing citizenry to get in and ingress and egress yeah. into their yeah. establishments of their residences, and it would be of a, uh, a difference from the Nimitz. I think it's a good analogy here is the director was looking at the Nimitz contraflow being an industrial zoned area, okay, and it's easier to do U-turns. The justification of the report from Fred and Morioka uh, contraflowing Port Weaver Road had mentioned it would then have people going into the inlets, such as in Kolowaka, to turn around and be able to do a U-turn to get back to where you need to go. So the, the justification is also a party to that. People will have to drive into people's neck of the woods and, and, and out of the way places and in small neighborhood streets to turn around and get back in the other direction. Mm -hmm. Because of that uh, left turn being removed. 
it could be moved. Numerous left turns. Right. Well, there's, you know, something I haven't heard. That's why I asked. Because, uh, it was been a dream. It's been a dream for us to contra flow for we were I mean, we're, 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 well, why not? I mean, let's take what we can at any point in time. And uh, so this is why, again, this communication in, in the packet handout is very important. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, Mitch, you got anything on okay? And I know I haven't talked to you for a month. Yeah, sorry. That's a year, you know? I don't know if you can see that planning and zoning, but remember that affordable rent is coming up down the road? Yeah. Okay. Um, everybody said they were building those high-end homes. Yeah. Around the 6 acres. Yeah. 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 There's no way to be built. You're just selling the lots. Thank you. 
No, no, I'm not staying here. It's okay. I'm just, I'm just turning this off for a second.
are there any activities coming up um, that the community should be aware of where they can be of assistance uh, to weed and seed? Um, January 18th, we'll, we'll be having a quality Ohana food distribution at the Hanukkah Board and Dog Club. So it'll start from 3 o'clock, starting to serving the senior citizens first, and then traveling to the Bible more and then to the public. December. Um, for general water announcements, the Board of Water Supply would like to wish you a very happy new year. The, the new 2008 water conservation calendar is on, it, it was, it has great suggestions on how you can help to conserve one of Oahu's most precious resources, illustrated by talented student artists. His art was chose, chosen doing last year's annual water conservation poster contest. This year's team, telling the team is conserving water starts with me. Each month features simple tips on how you can save water. The calendars are available to the public in the lobby at our Britannia location. So feel free to come by and pick one out. It is also available on our website at www.boardofwatersupply.com. And I have to apologize, I was uh, supposed to bring some um, calendars this evening, and I, and I did it. So I'll bring it for the next month, so I'm gonna miss one month. For uh, water saving tips, for this month, uh, operate automatic dishwashers and close washers only when they are fully loaded or properly set, uh, or properly set the water level for the size of your load you're using. And this completes my report for this evening. I'm ready for any questions. Say. Board members, any uh, comments, questions? Okay, okay uh, community, any questions for Cal, the water department? Kurt? Kind of room. Okay, room. The, uh, oh, sorry. Hey, you guys sitting all the way in the back? You just need to move forward. Kind of room, but they don't want to fix the room. Wow. Uh, they, they don't, the person that was working on the room is wrong. Wow. Yeah, wow. Okay, then um, Geiger Road project was where we installed a new uh, recycled water line to uh, help improve uh, the system and, um, and also to provide water to the new golf course that uh, Seiko is building. And the road is uh, a little bit, it hasn't been, uh, the final repairs to the road has not been completed. Um, they're out, my understanding is the last word that I got was that it was all to bid. Uh, and the contractors, you know, they're, they're receiving some bids now, so, so this should be repaired soon. I mean, I know because I drive that road <laughs> every day too, and, I, and I, I'm hoping that it will be repaired uh, as soon as possible. As soon as we get a date, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, questions from the community? All right, thank you. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. All right, moving right along. Uh, Lieutenant Commander, Coleman. Okay, good evening, happy new year. Um, happy new year. I have one update that's on the uh, Air Force Point Housing for me uh, that we were trying to establish. Okay. I talked to Lynn Tanaka and she informed me that the Admiral had a meeting with the management at Ford Housing and they came to an agreement to have a meeting However, they still have some security concerns in which they have to iron out before they can allow the meeting to take place on uh, Air Force Point. And uh, unfortunately, the admiral is unavailable until uh, March, but someone else is probably going to be set in, standing in, in his, uh, on his behalf to uh, establish that meeting time and date. They still have to get with the council members also, uh, but they, that should be coming up shortly. So, I'll probably email you the information on that because I'll probably have it before the next meeting when they'll be able to uh, establish a meeting time for a period to get together with the community. Yeah, 
Okay, that, uh, that sounds good. Uh, I, I guess just a quick clarification. <clears throat> the, uh, I, maybe I'm, I'm off on the wrong uh, foot here, but I want to make sure we're both on the same sheet of music and reference to the meeting that we talked about uh, that we we're trying to get together. Uh, the initial intent, if, if I understood it correct, correctly at that time, was that uh, they are part of uh, Ever, Ever Beach area. Yeah. And uh, we were, we here at the board was concerned if uh, the Iroquois Point community had any particular issues that needed to be addressed. Okay. okay. Uh, not specifically that we wanted to hold a board meeting on the property. Right. But more or less to hold a community meeting, and I say community within their community to see if there was any specific concerns that needed to be addressed in reference to the Eva Eva Beach community for the neighborhood board to address to possible elected officials or whoever. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to make sure that we're on the same sheet of music in respect to that. And that's my understanding also. But I will reiterate that to Lynn tomorrow. So that she can go back out just in case maybe she got it mixed up. But I don't think she did. She wants to make sure that the, uh, because it's all the leadership uh, within the management over there at the airport, even though the Navy is still involved because of the security concerns. So okay. we have a responsibility to make sure if they want us to bring on some additional support, then we will try to provide that for that day. Okay, I understand that. And of course, the reason I made that statement is because uh, normally I couldn't see the involvement of the admiral in a situation like this. But, you know, this, whatever goes is good, that's fine. Anyway, uh, board members, <coughs> any other questions, comments? Community? Okay. Now, I do yes, have sir. a question. Now, okay. I don't know how involved you guys get with Golf Road, just the portion of it that passes through the, I guess from the golf course of where the church is at, all the way to where the Navy property is because the trees are really starting to become an issue because we have two cars go down that road at the same time, there will be no way for people to pass at the same time. Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. Now, and only is that a private portion of the road, which means if the trees scratch your car, they're responsible, liable for the damage to the car. Yeah. Yeah. International right, this one down in the middle of the road here, Ever Beach International. Okay, okay. just want to make sure because uh, we have a person that picked up like 29 people over the over the holidays, and some over over the age of 65, some under the age of five, walking down that road. So it's just a matter of time before something happens down there, and you know, of course, they'll be liable. But okay, and that's uh, you know to emphasize what we just talked about. That's exactly some of the concerns that we're looking for. You know, because those things we can try to help address them to the areas and would you say the golf course? Yeah, all right, I'll call them tomorrow. I got a card for vice president. Okay. And if, if it's a matter of them getting it taken care of, cutting the trees back or whatever it is, you know, maybe they need to work with city, I don't know. But that's some of the issues that we're talking about in reference to having a meeting with that community to integrate them into our whole community, make sure that we address issues and concerns for everybody in the area. Yes. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. All right, hey, board business. Review and acceptance of the regular meeting minutes for December. Is there any other corrections? Um, may I ask where that communication came from? 
that came from uh, Shireen, uh, Tam Cycle, or Cycle Tam, sorry. We'll announce what the changes were. You gotta read it. Okay, they were sent to the office and we unfortunately failed to uh, bring them with us. All right, well, I got a couple. Okay, good. This is great. On page four, number seven, it's Dean Kuchita, vice chair of your org. He's vice president. Oh, okay. And then on page five, at number one and number four, when it says Tony Lua Beach Park, it's Tony Ula, U-L-A, and that's it. I make a motion to approve the minutes as Tom Hood, or his name? Yeah. I, I just had a question. Um, who is the, the vacancy? Uh, the uh, vacancy has not been identified yet. Um, however, uh, officially, it has not been identified. We're waiting for the um, uh, official letter to come in. Has it been received? Oh, yeah. Okay. The agenda was out when the letter was received for resignation. Uh, that was Gary. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Chair. <coughs> Members on page one, uh, name of a guest. I have the correct spelling for Daniel Paul DeGracia II, and it's his organization there as well. The second one is on page eight. Um, page eight of nine. Question and answers and comments. This is an exchange with Tommy Johnson, the governor's representative. It says plans to augment the H2 capacity. It should read H1. Uh, Gary, one more. Uh, if, the, if, the, if the seat is vacant, shouldn't we announce it until it is vacant? No, next month. We didn't receive the uh, notice of the vacancy. We didn't receive the official vacancy notice until right after the minutes went out. Then, then why was it uh, listed here on last month when if there was no actual vacancy? I was notified by email and I asked, I sent an email back to Gary asking him did he put in an official notice with the commission. He said he did not and he followed through with that effort. Okay, next question. Uh, I make a motion. Approval minutes. Uh, okay, motion on the floor for uh, approval of the minutes. Second. And second. All in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Okay, moving right along. Treasury's report. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, we have three budgets that we monitor, operating, publicity, and refreshments. Refreshments remains untouched at $120. Um, publicity, I think we need to coordinate here in the coming future with our friends from uh, Campbell High School to make sure that we uh, pay them. Therefore, um, of our $2,500 publicity budget, we do still have $2,050 in it. And our operating budget, uh, or a lot of $1,520 for the year, Balance as of last month was $1,267. We spent $57 last month for printing the minutes and the agenda. And our current balance for operating is $1,200. I think what's most relevant is looking at the trends. We don't appear to be on any trend to break the operating budget, nor the publicity, nor the refreshments. And in fact, we should have a surplus. And that concludes the treasurer's report. I make a motion to approve the report subject to audit. Thank you, sir. Okay, motion and second. Um, any opposed? I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, 
Item six, announcements. I have uh, one announcement here, and there are, uh, actually there's two announcements at the top of the agenda. One is for the Olelo uh, broadcast at 7 p.m. at uh, on channel 49. On Saturday is at 3, 3 p.m. now. Okay, and uh, just a reminder, second Thursday of every month is your board meeting. Uh, let's see. Okay, State Board of Education has a uh, Leeward District Community Meeting coming up. It's on Thursday, 31st of January, 6.30 p.m. It's going to be held at the Highlands Intermediate uh, Cafeteria in Pearl City. So if you are available, and you'd like to attend that. Is there uh, any other announcements, board members? D. Community. I guess I don't know if it's an announcement or what, but I'm still not exactly sure, in all due respect, um, why Gary's up here. I know that we were waiting for a resignation from the, the former person elected, but I don't understand the process by which um, Gary Bautista is something to go with that. Oh, I know he resigned, but, but that's not Gary Smith, that's Gary Bautista. So how does that happen? I'm just curious. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're confusing me now. Yeah. Nothing to do with this Gary here. Okay. Okay. We're still partying from New Year. Still. <laughs> All right. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, let's start over. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Any other announcements from the board? Okay. Dean, you're on. Thank you. Thank you and good evening and Happy New Year. Um, I would like to thank the chair for helping me with making the announcement because I had another engagement last month. So, of course, family first, right? Um, I would like to thank the whole community. Um, the Christmas parade was a success. Um, minor glitches, but of course, in any big event, there are glitches that we can always problem solve, right? Um, most importantly, I would like to thank the Weeding Seed Program, um, the Kapolei Police Station, the Civil Defense, they came out very strong, and, that, and also I need to recognize the Kuopunas, they all worked together to make it very safe for our uh, participants and our spectators to get to the finish and the end. Um, I would like to thank the sponsors and um, any of those that I missed, I would like to acknowledge them. The Ever Beach Merchants Association, Haseko, Gentry, Grace Pacific, Roadway Solutions, Drug Free Hawaii, Campbell Estates, and Ever Beach Lions Club. Well, and again, I would like to thank um, the Boys and Girls Club at Halipono. Um, before I thank them, we need to say a little prayer for the Patilao family. We were uh, not so fortunate to have that beautiful sleigh this year, uh, being an uh, illness to for uh, Mr. Patilao, so we need to pray for them. Hopefully it will come out this year and we can help support him in that way. Um, but um, Frances came up and she said she would help by getting a float decorated, um, best up there, what they could do, and get a Santa for us. So with a lot of the community support, it made it a success. Um, there, from what I understand from the community, there were a lot of people out there um, on the streets and the parade was uh, very huge. So once again, Happy New Year and thank the board and thank the community. All right, thank you. Very good. Uh, Dee, let me uh, uh, just interject one thing real quick uh, uh, for next year's Christmas parade. Um, the mayor did send me an uh, email, or in fact the mayor's office sent me an email and said that uh, if he has the dates early enough, he may try to attend. Um, it would be our pleasure. Um, I honor the third Saturday, so it's the third Saturday. The time frame, um, probably late afternoon. I'm going to try and change it just a little bit, but we'll see. It depends on what the community wants. It's not based on me, but it definitely will be the third Saturday. Okay. 
Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And hopefully we'll see Jamira out there. Thanks. Good job, by the way. Okay, uh, any other announcements from the community? All right, if not, we'll go into um, item seven, public generated issues, concerns. Any from the community at this point? No? Oh, oh, oh you got one, all right. Well, I was gonna wait for the mayor's representative. This is Joyce is sitting there. Joyce, we got a problem with only little Beach Park again. That bush never gets trimmed back big enough as you drive around the corner to get into the park. I'm not thinking that you really I've been asking for that for years. Uh, can we make sure, uh, Jeff, can we make sure we jot that down as a note so we can give it to her for follow-up? I know, but uh, she gets so much on her plate. Okay, so new year. She gets so much on her plate. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a, uh, I'm sorry, is there any other concerns from the community? Board members? Okay, I have a, uh, an issue that came to uh, uh, my attention. I did bring it up in our all committees meeting earlier this evening. And it concerns uh, uh, our community in reference to a relocation of a bus shelter um, at uh, Kolawaka and Fort Weaver Road. Currently, the bus shelter is located on southeast corner of uh, Fort Weaver Road, right on the corner of Kolawaka. The widening project is uh, uh, impacting that area or will impact that area soon. And I understand that uh, they want to relocate that to the northeast side of the uh, northeast side of that uh, intersection. So um, several residents in the area, uh, Everbike Gentry area, are concerned about that uh, removal or relocation of the bus shelter simply because uh, a couple different things that uh, will add a safety factor because people coming out of Soda Creek, uh, Palmport, or Arbor's area crossing Fort Weaver Road to get to the bus stop currently where it is is a, um, a pretty good location at this point. However, if they move it to the opposite side of the street, then you're going to be in the direct line of uh, all the major traffic going on Fort Weaver Road, trying to cross over to catch the bus, uh, of course, heading out towards the freeway, especially in the morning. In the evening, obviously, obviously it's not that much uh, traffic on that side of the street, it's reversed. So that's a concern. I've asked uh, our uh, uh, board members in our all committees meeting uh, that uh, we might want to consider that. There was a uh, petition, or I'm sorry, it's a proposed relocation of bus stop petition that had come, that had, was presented to me earlier with uh, several names of people, I guess, uh, really uh, bordering that uh, that's, uh, northeast side uh, housing area, uh, all those houses in that area, housing in that area. Currently where the bus stop is located, it was built with a, uh, a buffer and uh, a really solid wall there. And of course the uh, townhouses that are above that has been elevated in such a manner that the uh, bus noise does not bother them. And, and of course it's been there since the development. But uh, with the relocation, it causes a couple of things. Like I said, it's a noise barrier as well as uh, a safety factor. Uh, I'd like to, uh, uh, I'm not sure if there's a time period on this, but I would like to uh, ask the board if we might uh, entertain this at the uh, next month's meeting and uh, you know, probably get uh, uh, maybe a, some of the residents in the community that that's directly affecting. Uh, I've asked them to uh, get some solicitations or some kind of uh, uh, reading from the riders of the bus and, and what they thought about crossing the road to get to the bus stop in its proposed new location. 
Okay, so board members, do uh, you have any comments or questions on that? I don't want to. Karen? Can we get a proposal? Yes, we can. Uh, there was only. I can. I'll do that. There was only one that was presented to me. It was a, a addressed to the Evan Neighborhood Board and thank you uh, to me. And uh, we'll get this out. Okay. Any other uh, Jeff? Uh, all this road reworking is temporary. They gave it a good thought to where to put it. They're going to have to deal with it. And then after the road is finished, the bus stop goes back to where it was. Is that the plan? Yeah, there's not much else they can put it because they need to work on that side of the road. So you really can't move it up and down any further. So I'm sorry that some of the residents have to walk across the street, but that's temporary. <laughs> we can ask them how long, three months, six months, and again, then it goes back. But oh, and, and that may be something that we need to address, but we also uh, need to address the uh, safety factor of the people crossing the road currently. Uh, where it is now is relatively safe. Of course, they're using the traffic lighters, uh, crosswalks, and what have you. Where it's going to be, or where the proposed uh, location is going to be, uh, they would have to cross um, a double lane, and of course, at that point, uh, well, currently, four or five lanes of traffic just to get to it. And there's a massive amount of traffic coming out of Tolo Walker going up towards the freeway. All right, but go ahead and get your presentation going, and you're not going to find another place. It has to go across the road while they work on the side of the road that they need to work on. And there is no sense they work a few hundred feet in front, a few hundred feet in back. It'll just waste so much time with the construction company. They need to get access. So go ahead, put it on the agenda. Okay, good, thank you. Any other comments? Okay, any uh, comments from the community? Okay, thank you. Any other concerns, uh, uh, public generated concerns, issues? Nothing? All right, fantastic. Moving right along. Okay, we have uh, unfinished business. Ko'o Pili project, uh, informational update. Dean? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, shall we? Take a two-second break. All right, let's take a uh, two-minute recess.
Uh, I know at the last last month at the meeting, there was a lot of discussion about the East West Connector, the possible bridge on Farrington that goes over on some of the things we talked about. Um, what I wanted to do is provide you guys with this kind of overview of what's happening so you get an understanding of um, the traffic situation today will get better because all of these basically roads are being constructed right now. <clears throat> the color coding, the red roads are the roads that were part of um, 0252, which is a, the city's impact fee ordinance, which assess building permits in the city and county form rule. Uh, impact fee for the construction of these roads. And <clears throat> if you look closely, excuse me. You see these kind of patch marks where it kind of delineated certain lengths. That's the color that they are going to be using So those are the roads that are currently subject to 025 because those are the roads that are being constructed right now. Some of them are improvements widely. Um, the dark yellow roads are mustard colored roads. These four were the roads that our whole Pili task force identified as. Community would like to see it put on the tip. 
uh, because it opens up that possibility of getting federal funds and it moves it up in the priority as far as the agencies are concerned for funding. So, like your chair was talking about, maybe your first step would be to identify what roads are important from a regional perspective, which ones you could get to AMPO and get on a tip, and also at the same time, what roads you might want to ask the city to consider and you're available to fight. So there's a lot of opportunities for this board to really get involved in prioritizing the road improvements in this region. <coughs> The last thing I'd like to mention is that the last meeting, uh, I talked about the EIS being ready for Hopili. Uh, right now, the scheduled publication date is February 12th, but we're not certain that we can meet that date because we're waiting for one more study to be completed. As I said at the last meeting, um, the, the trans transportation analysis took a lot longer than we had anticipated because of the potential transit stops along the way. There's been no engineering work done before in Hawaii looking at the impact of transit and mixed use development on traffic. So we had to bring in mainland consultants to basically model something that hadn't been modeled before in Hawaii. That's what has taken a long time. <clears throat> and the way EIS is going, um, the noise and air quality, um, what do you call it, analysis can't be done until the traffic is done. So we finished the traffic end of November, the noise and air quality guys are working on it. We hope to have the document finalized and ready for publication um, February 12th. If not, it will be the second, I think February 20, some 26 at the beginning. But our intent is to file as quickly as possible and we will be sending the neighborhood board, uh, the members of our task force, letters of, um, and informing them of when the comment period is and how you can submit comments. <clears throat> Hopefully also has a website. Um, the website's listed on the brochure I handed out. So if you have any questions, you want to see any of this stuff, it's all up on our website. This road section, this new map I just had prepared based on what the task force had come up with. And, um, basically as a result of the last meeting that we had here last month, I wanted to show the community what was going on as far as road work in this So with that, I'll be happy to try and answer any questions you might have. Okay, thanks, Steve. Uh, board members? Board members? No? All right, excellent presentation. Thank you. Uh, from the board members. Uh, anybody else? Okay. Uh, community, Glenn, you're on deck. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Aloha, everybody. Mr. Chair, we heard this spiel once before. Back in the 80s, when they talked about living, playing, and working in a community, that was a foregone thought. If you look at where we stand today, we're inundated with construction. Look at the bottom of this map, that's where we are. We try daily to get up to the freeway. And they're talking about more construction, 1,500 acres. How many, translating to units, how many units are those? 8,000, 15, 15, uh, 8,500? We've been, we've been inundated with traffic, with traffic ever since this was de designated as a second city. And we've got two problems. One, they talk about jobs. But the people, the people in the area cannot get the better jobs. They have to settle for the service jobs. We agree to that. I mean, there's got to be a stop to the amount of construction that goes on daily in our community. They talk about roads. They talk about uh, impact fees. Okay, and your question is? I'm just making a point, Mr. Chair. Well, I understand. That the yeah. community got to realize that we live at the end of the, of the road. Yes. yes. And it's a daily challenge to get up to the freeway. We talk about the EVA development plans, and it's five years coming for review. It hasn't been here yet. We talk about rail, we've been sidestepped. EVA Beach has been sidestepped from, the, from inputting into the rail, decisions of the rail. EVA Beach has been sidestepped. Now, we haven't been included in, the, in this whole PV plan, not at all. I don't know, I haven't been included. 
I know people from Maka Kilo has been included. Right. Has anybody of you right. been included? Not at all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, any other uh, questions or comments from the uh, audience? Yes, sir. Oh, you got one right here, if you like. Yeah, uh, nice presentation. I love your uh, roads and nice colors and all that. I just was uh, wondering, uh, uh, Coach, yeah. name please. Sorry. Oh, uh, Chris. Okay. Coach Chris, thanks. Chris, Le yeah. uh, Leslie, Burke, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and, and nice presentation and all that. I'm just wondering, um, how many lanes are these uh, roads going to consist of? And um, if we can get some direct roads and possibly two or three different ways into Eva Beach, because I know with the poles going down in Anakuli, um, the painters wanting to paint stripes in the middle of the day when possibly they might be think about working at nighttime um, down here on the Fort Weaver wide, uh, we're widening the road over here. and. Um, who knows how long that's going to take? Uh, seven or eight guys working on a six million dollar job. It, it might take a while, but I appreciate you uh, coming, and um, maybe we can get some input to the state and possibly get two or three other roads coming in, even if it be off road or whatever. I mean, you know, people want to get home in a, in a short time, and two or three cars breaking down. It's uh, it's humbug. I know you drive out here at nighttime, but I appreciate you coming out, and maybe we can get two or three other alternative roads during the type of uh, construction that we're going to have going on here this next few months. Thank you, sir. Okay, good point. Do you want to address that, uh, Dean, if any? Sure, um, we're not involved in the sizing of, of the roads themselves, but my understanding is Fort Weaver is going to be widened to maybe six lanes. Six lanes. North South Road is six lanes. Uh, I'm not sure if Fort Weaver might be four. But, you know, I guess the, the point is you have all this now new capacity. And if you contrary it during the rush hour a.m. at another lane going out or two lanes going out, p.m. at another couple lanes coming in, I think it will dramatically improve um, with the, at least the flow within Eva. Uh, right now, it's stuff because Fort Weaver is the only way in and out, you know. But like I said, if you look forward, all of this stuff is coming into play right now. I think North South Road will be complete 2009. Um, every time we talk to DOT, the date goes from January of 2009 to first quarter to the second quarter. I'm not sure where it's going to be right now, but it's it's coming. So you know, we see the dust screens up there. The interchange is being constructed right now. Okay, good. Thank you. Any other questions, comments from the community? Uh, okay, plan one, and uh, please keep it down a little bit, time wise. Time wise. Mr. Chair, they continue to talk about roads. But I've been advocating for that north-south road to be realigned. That road you see, you see that, that's going right up to the freeway, that red line, will be of no use to us in Eva Beach. It's obsolete, the road. I mean, you're gonna go travel 12 miles to get back on the freeway, back to Fort Weaver Road. I mean, it makes no sense at all. I mean, and, and they continue to build roads, but the roads, Take us out of here. Take us out of here. I think they don't, they don't have a, a concept that you've got to move businesses. You've got to provide tax incentives. You've got to buy tax credits so businesses move out here. We can't continue to drive out of here. That's true. And, and, and they're creating roads that are pleasing to us in their development. For who? For their development? I mean, they got to reconsider the people that live down the stream, the people that live down the road. How are they going to accommodate us? Yet nobody speaks up and say, look, they're clogging the hole for us to get out. Yeah. i got to leave 4.30 in the morning, quarter to 5 in the morning to get to town. I'm with you, and I think everybody here in the community is also... I mean, there. I mean, people, we got to wake up. All right, we got it. Yes, sir. Scott, a question? Thanks, um, the these roads being built, um, the, the widening of Fort Weaver, uh, North South, the widening of Fort Barron, they will go both ways, right? You can go in and out of them, just point of clarification. Um, and also, I wonder if, if, if Mr. Uchida could answer this. Will these roads be finished before Hull Kitty begins? Can you clarify that? Um, if the schedule doesn't slip, I believe the roads will be finished because we're. 
Uh, at the State Language Commission right now, we don't expect getting out to probably 2008, 2009. And then we need to go to the city and get zoning, subdivision approval. So we probably won't be breaking ground out there or anything until 2011, 2012, if there is. Um, the, the transit project also presents some complications for us in the planning. Uh, they need to set the alignment. We can't put any of the high density or higher density developments in until the transit is built and operating because you want less parking, less reliance on cars. Right? So it's kind of a mixed bag as far as what we're going to do at this point. Okay, Jeff. I see this comment on your brochure, and I guess it's our Scott that made the comment. By putting yourself at the mercy of the community's whims, you assure a lifetime commitment from your stakeholders. My whim is you only build half the project. Listen to the community, build half the houses. I suggested this to you boys two years ago. We had a meeting in Representative uh, Kevin Miller's office. Tom was there, I was there. I suggested build half the home 6,000 and build the rest as a business commercial area so the people can truly live and work in their own community. However, I know the money is in single family homes. I'm a carpenter. They make big money on them $600,000 homes. But well, you've already done this, so there's no more getting any more. That's, that's a good point. Uh, but I think what, what the neighborhood board should do if that's the position is when the update of the LDP comes in, we need to decrease the number of units that are planned for development in Everett. <coughs> because we're building in accordance with what the city has planned for. And the city identified the second city out here in Everett couple of So, you know, changes to the density would require, you know, the city to basically change the development plan out here. Okay. All right, um, everybody's on pause right now. We have to change date. <laughs> Different options, how to deal with this future increase in the uh, trip to map. No bill certainly is an option, although no bill doesn't mean doing nothing. It means where we will be building almost $3 billion worth, or in fact, over $3 billion worth of highway improvements, plus improving on the buses, increasing the number of buses to over 600 buses from current 500 bus free size. And another option we looked at was it called, well, this is, these are federal terms, Transportation System Management, or TSM for short. This really means of expanding the buses to, instead of a, uh, only about 600 plus number of buses in a no deal option, TSM option would have about 800, 900 buses running to accommodate their demand. And another one that we looked at is this thing called managed lane slash bus guideway. This is what it's been talked about as a hub lane and an also busway. What did it mean by managed lane? Is that it is two lane viaduct will be constructed from the railway change to the uh, Evilay area, about 16 mile long. And then that facility is going to be opened up to buses first as a busway. And then any excess capacity will be open for the HOV. And if there's a still more capacity left, and then the people would, uh, would pay the toll instead of having a passenger will be able to use this. So this layer of the management is the reason why we call it managed lane. By the way, this concept came from the, the public when we went out to the outreach program and see what else other than these required the no-bill TSM and the fixed highway proposed options <coughs> would public want to look at. And then some segment of people said that the managed lane option. And it had the maps and the website and everything. So we took that as a concept and studied it. So the bus lane or bus type of operation has been studied in a managed lane uh, option. And the last one, of course, is the fixed highway. I can uh, elaborate on that a little bit in the next slides, but the, the main thing is that decision, 
from choosing the locally preferred alternative was done in December last year. Now, the decision was then made, therefore, was that the choosing the fixed guide weight as a choice of a mode. And a choice of alignment also has been made by city council. Initially, it's going to run from East Kapu Lake, where the Croc Center is uh, uh, being proposed, toward the uh, south end of the Kai end of the uh, north-south road, and then runs to Alamona Shopping Center. Ultimately, city council voted that this system should be expanded from all the way to Kapu Lake and also to spur to Manoa, uh, Yurich Manoa and, and White Key. So that's the ultimate decision that has been made to date. Now, what, what are the decisions that are still to be made? We talked about it tonight. Fixed guide vehicle technology. That has been decided, and then the city administration has proposed that the uh, panel of the people, engineers, assemble to look at the information provided by the vendors so that uh, these people can make the best selection as to what makes sense, not only in terms of the performance and service the system would provide, but for how much. Of course, you know, that is a very important factor, cost. And then the other design details, like uh, how should the stations look, or, or how should guideway the structure itself would look like, given the size that's required. Those decisions haven't been made. Now, the, the decision that's made, made as choosing the technology, reason for that, the system capacity is equivalent to six freeway lane of cars. And that's the substantial capacity we can provide with this fixed highway system instead of continue to build the roadways. I think most of us agree we can't really build the road continuously to try to get out of the congestion. We have to do something else. Now, how much is this system is going to cost? Three and a half billion dollars is the total cost estimated at current dollar without inflation. Whenever you compare the cost of doing something, you cannot inflate one and not inflate the other. So the federal government requires us in the uh, steps of the alternative analysis to look at in the same line. And that means we have to fix it as the current dollar value and how much is this thing is going to cost compared to others. So the estimated cost in 2006 dollars by the time that we did this study was a three and a half billion. But I'd like to get your attention on the breakdown of the three and a half billion dollars. Only about half of 1.8 billion dollars is for the actual construction. 200 million dollars for the buying vehicles and the 70 million dollars for the land acquisition for the right of way. Often we've been commented that 70 million seems very little, but that's because the most of this guideway system runs on the current roadway right away. We don't have to take much of the land. Only when we have a touchdown from the station into the sidewalk area, and the sidewalk needs to be widened or it's taking a little uh, bigger space, those are the spaces we need. Plus, there are areas that, that are we transition from one street to another street, such as from a Queen Street to Kona in town. Those are the areas that we have to cut across the property. So we would be taking few properties, and, and that's the amount of cost that uh, we estimate. And now, the last line, $1.4 billion for contingency. That is a substantial amount for the contingency and with the soft cost. Soft cost means engineering design cost, something that we're not building, but we're going to be paying consultants for the design of this. So 1.4 billion, that's the cushion we have in this cost estimate. In terms of the percentage, typically when, you, when we do this type of engineering work, the soft cost or the engineering cost is about less than or almost less than 10% of the total cost. But in this case, we are required to add 30% by feds because of this risk factor or unknown in the future. And also the contingency, typically it's added about 10, 15, 20%. But in our case, we have as much as 36% added to this contingency. So that's the reason why we feel comfortable in telling you this is going to cost $3.5 billion in today's dollar. And 
we have enough buffer safety factor built into this cost estimate. Now the last bullet we're showing in this slide, operation and maintenance cost less than the expanded bus system. This is the key reason why we're pushing for this system. By the time that we reach year 2030, in our calculation, it costs more to run the buses to operate and meet the demand than having this higher capacity system with a less laborious system uh, running. It's a very simple logic. Usual, the standard buses carry about 70 passengers by design. Required, of course, one driver and out of uh, three and a half, well, three and a half of uh, uh, mechanics. This is kind of a strange thing, but the, for each bus you added, you actually need two drivers because of the shift. And you need about three quarter of the mechanics for the maintenance. So to run the bus, about 70% of the cost is the labor. Now this system carries 300 passengers, about four and a half times more than the buses. So that's the real simplistic logic of you save that much labor by carrying more people in each vehicle. Now the transit technology, because city council has voted involved keeping us staying informed with accurate information. If you have any questions, and we will be always happy to answer them. Thank you. Maximum speed is the speed it reaches in between the stations. That's my question. Yeah. What, so what would be the speed outside of the Philia system of the other technologies that you're considering? What's the top speed from station to station at its highest point? What's the fastest it's going to go? The fastest it's going to go, like I said, is the 55 plus miles per hour. That's what it can do. What? Okay. Okay. With one of the, the reason I'm bringing this up is that with the Philia system, one of the things I like about it is that it can actually move parallel and does not need a lot of uh, space for acceleration and deceleration. The stations, from what I've seen, are far smaller. In fact, if you look at the screen, when you look at the, at the, the station in Italy, um, very small bus stations, is, it, it can really accommodate one or two buses at length, and then the bus, instead of waiting for the bus ahead of it to go, it can actually move in a parallel direction past the bus and the point being is that you could get a bus in Ebba Beach, pick you up right here at this at this place, let's assume, get on that fixed guideway and go at probably 60 miles an hour, a bus can probably go, all the way from point A to point B without stopping 19 times. See, what we will have is 19 stops between here and there versus this Philia system, which could take different modes. You could, you could stop at 19 stops if you like, or you could do what's called like a super express and you can go from point A to point B. And, and I think what we're talking about here is efficiency as well. So I just want to bring that up. Okay, thank you. Well, can I respond to that? Yes, though? please. Um, I think you have some of the concept to mix up because of number one, in order to accelerate, 
for the vehicle to get to the 60 miles per hour. Buses usually have a less acceleration rates than the uh, typical railroad can have. In other words, it takes longer to reach that point. Um, and then there's a comfort of the, or safety of the passengers. So it's not like uh, just because you have a super duper engine you can blast off. No, you have to make sure you maintain a certain acceleration rate so you don't throw anybody off. So there's not much difference in those two. Now, another point about you said that the buses can uh, overtake or pass the other vehicles on the train, I mean, stop, stopping on the station. That means you're talking about four lane facility at the minimum. So the station width is going to be about, about a, a 70 to 80 feet wide instead of about 50 feet wide. You're going to need a lot more. And another thing about your logic is that, okay, so you say that people don't have to stop at all those stops. How do we know? Where do people want to go when they're riding on the system? That's the reason why trains stop at every station, or we declare that this uh, particular train or the bus is either limited express or the express bus. It doesn't have any other stop. Even with a train system, we can do that. Very quickly, Chair, when you mentioned the footage there, that if we take 10 buses, which would be like, let's, let's assume that rail, if it were to be rail, is approximately 10 buses strung together. <coughs> No. If we look at, oh, how, how many buses do you think that? Okay, yeah. Quick question, quick question. Uh, is, is, uh, okay. is the bus station versus the rail station, the rail station, okay, the Tom, 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 excuse me. I think you're carrying it a little bit over. If you want to go one-on-one -on -one, uh, with uh, Gary, I would appreciate that outside. We need to continue to move on with the uh, program. Jeff? Uh, yes, we're actually supposed to discuss the city council resolution. Are we going to discuss that, or are we just going to take a presentation on the train? And do you want a motion from us on the resolution, Gary? Have all of you read the resolution? I have, and I'm not in favor of it. I would like to hear from uh, our councilman, uh, Donovan Delacruz, if they have a different proposal, because this is brought by the mayor, not by the city council. And if we're going to discuss it, is well, there anything Essentially, else? Um, what we're trying to do, I think what the administration is trying to do, and um, if you look at the way the resolution is written, is to depoliticize the uh, selection of the technology. Um, and I kind of agree with Donovan on that. So I make a motion the other neighborhood board does not approve this resolution? I second that motion. We'll have a discussion. We'll have a discussion. We'll have a discussion. Okay. Here. Yeah. Um, my concern is that there's only five members. Why not seven? Can any council member uh, answer that? I think the original resolution just called for five selected by the administration. Um, you know, any council member can offer an amendment to change the, the, the makeup of the panel. You know, we, one suggestion has been that every member select one person, and then that could be an advisory committee. Um, we do that now with uh, reapportionment. Every council member selects one person to the reapportionment commission. So there are a number of ways that that you could create a task force. I mean, you could be creative as you want to be. Um, but I still think that the decision should be made with the council and that the committee do its job in, in getting input. You know, those meetings are going to be posted. It allows everyone to be able to testify in one, two, or three minutes. And, and their testimony is also registered with the clerk. And all of that is going to be it's, it's public. So the more transparency, I think, the better. Okay. Yes, we're going to hear from uh, Ann right now. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about spending $5 billion, which is coming out of your wallet. And so I think that these decisions should be made by people who live here. But then this panel, are, they're all from the mainland. We're going to pay them 20000 each to cover their expenses to come here. And then they'll be gone. So they're going to make a decision 
because this, uh, this panel is not advisory. They're going to make the decision. And there are no public hearings. They'll just make the decision, tell us. They won't even have to tell us. They'll make the decision, and that'll be it. Now, if we're going to spend $5, $5 billion of our money, I think that it should be a public decision. We're reluctant to make those decisions. We would be coming to the, we all attend neighborhood boards. We all attend community meetings. We know the feeling out there. We can at least converse. And then if we make the wrong decision, you can blame us. We'll be here. We're accountable. So I am against having a panel of people decide how to spend $5 billion of our money. All right, thank you. Councilman Irma Paul. All right, all right. Uh, just to correct, this, it is advisory. Uh, by ordinance, the council has the right that they can exercise to select the technology. And what I've said in here is, what we've talked about is, we, the person that created this panel, we get the expertise, and they're going to be required to come and make the presentation to the transportation committee about what they've done, what their recommendation is, and why. And the council at that point can decide, do we agree with them and go along with it, or do we not? Okay. And again, so, I, again, you, you take it to the same way we selected the, um, the LPA. We had an alternative analysis before us, okay? And it cost $10 million, we all know that. But we used that as the tool to be presented to council and then make decisions on it. And that's the same thing that this panel will do. I said, I know that right now there's language in there about the council will not exercise its right. Okay, just so you know, what we've all been talking about is removing that language. And so again, so they're going to need to come, and we're also looking at adding language that says they are going to be required to come do a face-to-face -face presentation to the committee or to the council, and not just be able to hand us a stack of paper and not come in and, and respond to questions. As Councilmember Delicus mentioned, like we're dealing with the landfill, when the city came up with the solid waste master plan, they were required to come to the committee and make a presentation and answer questions to allow the council to use that as a tool. And that's what I foresee as being the same way. But like we needed an alternative analysis done by consultants for us to make an LPA decision, I think we need this type of expertise to give to us to make this, this, this technology. And we may agree with them, and we may not, but we need that tool. Maybe I still have it. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, uh, what I don't like also is the five people come from the mainland. And when you come here, they don't know what we have here. They use the mainland thoughts. You go to mainland cities, completely different. And I'll give you an example. When the uh, Base Realignment and Closure Commission came here and decided to close Byron's Point 15 years ago, if we would have left it up to the people, instead of these people coming from the mainland, the people in the state of Hawaii would have voted to close uh, Makua Valley, Pohakuloa on the Big Island, and Fort De Rusi if they want to save money. And that's why we should have a local panel, and then it comes back to the people. So I call for the question. Oh, oh, oh. All right, I'll just roll. We gotta go home. <laughs> Sorry, this isn't the this isn't the question, but the clarification as a person who is behind in doing this uh, <coughs> assembly, uh, I would like to explain what exactly had happened. Originally, the intent was that this is uh, really uh, technology selection. Uh, yes, there are some other decisions, policy decisions, whatever, certainly should involve more people. But in this case, as I indicated in our um, uh, PowerPoint, that it's really technology selection between what's available. Steel, steel, rubber tire, or maglev. So it's a matter of looking at those um, information from vendors and they decide which one has the best performance for the money. And on the money part, we're going to be requesting the cost that they uh, charge an out of city. So all this is really black and white information so we need some people with experience of having done the system to tell us that works, that doesn't work. For instance, the uh, uh, Vancouver system, it has a unique system. They put, um, it's a steel wheel <coughs> and a steel rail. It looks like a conventional system, yet it has a linear motor. Now, 
Is it, it should it be a city council decision to say linear motor is better than a conventional motor? And then there, I can see if one has a tremendous cost advantage, maybe we should consider some unique feature. So that's exactly what this panel is going to do. So we proposed, the initial mayor's proposal was to have all members uh, uh, appointed by the mayor. The reason why the mayor had done so in, term, in um, form of a resolution was to inform the city council what he intends to do. But when it hits the committee, the, the members change as to half, half of uh, administration and other half by city council members. So that's the road that we came thus far. Okay, thank you. Uh, no, 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 no. Because we're not getting to the point. It stays right. here. Right. We are, we we are, we are, are that the council yes, that the yes. process selection technology is, is advantageous to the city and it declares that the council hereby declines no. to exercise its right to select the technology. We can't have that. We can't have our city council decline something. So I call for a question on my motion. And that's what I was trying to get to. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, there is a motion on the floor. It has been discussed. Let's call for the question. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. We're going to uh, reread the uh, motion and uh, then we'll call for the question. Uh, the motion reads the Evan Neighborhood Board number 23 does not support the five members from. We'll just say resolution, resolution. 07 376 CD1. Okay. Does not support resolution 07 376 CD1. Relating to establishing a technical expert panel to select fixed direct technology. Mr. Chair, for clarification, if, if we just amongst ourselves make this vote, the motion doesn't tell us who we're telling. Can we have in this motion at least a friendly amendment that would say we're going to prize the city council members of this? Yeah, you're supposed to send that should be in the motion if you don't mind. Thank All right, you. go ahead. Okay, so I mean, you understand the uh, motion, Mr. Beamer? You understand the motion? Okay. Call for the vote, please. Within the time limits, um, uh, 
we do have a time policy in place and I want to try to stick to that as much as possible and uh, again I apologize for the extended presentations earlier. Uh, with that we got whole marathon Steve Foster is available. Steve, thanks for coming in, and thanks for your patience, and a happy new year. Oh, thanks. Again, Steve Foster, I'm not from the Honolulu, well, I work for the Honolulu Marathon, but I'm not representing them today. Uh, I'm here representing the Pacific Sport Events and events that we do on this side of the island. Uh, in the past, that we put on events out here and it hasn't gone through, we haven't informed you of, it's a change in my policy and my company this year, that every time we have an event, we are going to let the city, the city council or the board members uh, of the different communities know. As a practice, I use downtown. I put on the uh, Honolulu Triathlon downtown. Uh, I go to every board meeting and make sure that they understand what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, the safety behind it. And I feel that we out in Eva, and I am a resident of Eva, that uh, we need to do the same thing here because I want to bring more events out into this portion of the island. It's a great place. I like people to come out here and see what we have and see what we can do. Now the event that, that uh, I want to discuss is going to be on the 29th and the, and the 30th of March. Uh, it's called the Iroquois Point Triathlon. For any of you that's never seen a triathlon, it's a swim, it's a bike, and it's a run. And first on the 29th, we do a kids race, which is probably one of the most spectacular things to see is kids from 6 to 14 get out and do a short swim. They hop on their bikes. We've got a short bike course for them. And then they do a, uh, about a mile run. And every kid gets a medal at the end of the race. It, it's great. We have complete uh, professional water safety. We have bicycle, bicycle safety. We have uh, medical on site. Um, but that's all contained within the Iroquois Point area, so it really doesn't have an impact on the per se Eva Beach area. Uh, the event that, I, that does have an impact is the race the next day. Uh, it's an adult event. We usually have about between 300. My maximum is going to be 350 people. I don't want to go much above that just because I don't want to clog the roads up. Um, just to let you know, uh, I, t I took over the Honolulu Triathlon when it went out the other direction towards the Kahala area that first year. Uh, I, I, I was brought in about a week before the race took place. I got 700 minutes of complaints on my telephone. Okay. This last year when I put it on going the other direction, I received four complaints total. So that's, that's why we do this is to make sure that everybody knows and understands what's going on. Okay, where's it going to impact uh, us as Eva Beach residents? On Sunday at 7 o'clock in the morning, the gun goes off. They'll do a swim out behind the pool low uh, range. Uh, so it's completely external. We have water safety out there. It takes about 15 minutes for the people, the first people to get out of the water. So at 7.15, the bikes will be hitting the road. Out of the front gate of Iroquois Point, they'll make a right-hand turn and head uh, on North Road up towards my house on Iroquois Road. They don't go to Fort Weaver Road. I want to stay on Fort Weaver Road as much as I possibly can uh, so we don't delay traffic. They'll make a U-turn right at the, uh, uh, the uh, just before the school, they make a U-turn. We don't even hit the stoplight there. Come back on North Road, follow North Road all the way back to Fort Weaver Road. Make a left-hand turn on Fort Weaver Road, come in the back gate of uh, by Pulo Range, and that's the end of the bike. That's the last you'll see of these guys. They do their run all on private property. We hire HPD. We have uh, a number of HPD out there, lead motorcycle, trailing motorcycle at all the intersections. We don't close the roads, but we put advisories on all the roads. So we have caution, bicycle race in progress on all of the roads, on all the intersections leading into the roads. We have all of the uh, cautionary uh, stuff on. So what we really want to do is make sure that you guys know that we're going to be out there. There's going to be some bicycles on the road. Uh, a heads up and want to invite any of you to come out, especially watch the kids race, because that's one of the best best things to, to see. And also, we'll put the, the Patriot run on again. I helped Kimberly this last year. Uh, we put the Patriot run on uh, out there and had what, 500 plus people for that also. So again, any questions? Uh, safety is my, uh, is my concern and we have lots of safety in place, professional safety people. All right, fantastic. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Well, it seems like you're doing it already. 
Well, uh, uh, the permitting process is already in, but yes, I, I, I anticipate no. I, I, I used to ride my bicycle around the roads here, but <laughs> I wish you could not come down to what we roads as I stated to you. Now, well, again, we don't close the roads. We don't yeah, close the roads. I understand, but anybody been out there with runners and bicycles, and you're supposed to give them weight, I'll be running them off the road if I got to go somewhere. Instead of coming down to the okay, road, okay, road okay, road, yeah. all right, I yeah. got a suggestion to make it a lot safer. There's a road right over here. Instead of coming all the way down to the intersection here, North Road and Fort Weaver Road, cut across right here to Fort Weaver Road. I can't think of the name of the road right here. Dealey Boy comes into it. Damn, I'm getting old. It's right here. And then you can extend your race a little bit. That is North Road, right? Right. It's, it's right here. I'll, I'll, I'll okay, you, right? okay, I, I will go out and look at it. I'll give you that. I will, I will go out and look at it. Instead of going down to the intersection with the traffic light. Okay. Okay, well, but, but I do have police there controlling traffic. I have two policemen controlling the traffic. And last year there was no congestion whatsoever. Uh, they did have it last year. And again, I changed the policy in the company this year. And this is why I'm out here. Where there, there was no congestion out there last year. You didn't even know there was a race out there. I've seen that. I've been there. I was there at the... The, uh, okay. the, uh, well, we we we, we moved. The, I don't go to where they go, but I go out on the road. Well, we moved the Patriot Run. It wasn't out there this last year. It was over there. Okay. 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 Good. Good. More safer if you cut out that. Right. Suggestion well taken. Okay. Um, any other board members? Yes. It's Safety reason why coming down the road. I think you really cut back the trees on both sides. Well, you know what I did last year? I, I, no, 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 laugh if you will, but I had a construction company go out there and patch those roads myself last year for the bikes. I did that myself. All right. Anybody else? Community residents? Comments? Pull over. The old rifle range. Well, just to let you know, I, I pay to clean. I pay to clean that back road up to myself. <laughs> okay. Any other, any other comments? Okay, thanks, Steve. I really appreciate it, and thank you for speaking through that. And thank you, for, and again, uh, every I, I anticipate more events out here, right. and I want to come to you with the, the more events that I do. I, I traffic management is my most concern. Also, I've got to be four thirty in the morning. All day. Okay, all right. good deal. Thank you. Okay, moving right along. Mayor's rep. Happy New Year. Missed you last month. Good evening. Um, thank you. It's good to see you all. Happy New Year. Um, last month, due to an emergency, I uh, actually myself, <laughs> being in, in the ER, someone else ended up covering this meeting. So thank you. Thank you for your patience. I understand that there's some there's some follow up requests that you've asked for, and um, I'd like to report that the sign request at Kahimokala Mohala, excuse me, has been completed by DTS. They um, gone ahead and replaced those missing signs. There was another request that you submitted to um, Michelle, our rep, that was here, and it had to do with uh, center lines on on several streets that DTS investigated, and they have um, reviewed the traffic history on Hanakahi Street, and so they will be installing a center line there. I, I, looks like the neighborhood board was CC'd on this letter, so. I'm hoping you have that before you. Um, I understand also there's some concerns about the tree trimming on Renton Road and whether that's um, satisfactory, so I'll go back and make sh have them take a look at that. Um, I believe that's the last of the items pending. Okay, um, Gary, he likes to talk to you. Would you check into the EDP ever developing plan? 10 years, um, you know, we'd like to know what's their plan, you know, it's, it's 10 years overdue. Mm -hmm. Not 10 years yet. 
Okay. Uh, as Mark, as Mark, what concerns me by uh, the last report was that they were three months out, but I'll be happy to get an update. Thank you. And uh, another one was that uh, uh, could you check with BTS again? Why are the 16 wheelers and 20 wheelers traversing and ruining my renting road? Are they going to pay for it to fix it? Um, again, I believe that was reported last time, and um, the report DTS came back with is that they're unable to prohibit um, they said they vehicles. They do nothing about it. Right, yeah, under the existing laws or statutes or ordinances on the books, it would require an ordinance change. If, if, I, uh, if I may interject here, I believe uh, at one of our board meetings, I can't remember which one, two months ago I think it was, um, uh, Ann had made a suggestion that uh, maybe we address the companies that are utilizing that road with the 18 wheelers or whatever the heavy duty uh, vehicles and see if they would uh, consider using an alternate route so that might help in that respect. Uh, if you want to work together, I'll. The answer was that they have no alternate routes. So what you're saying is we already addressed it with them? We addressed it, however, okay. we need to know. Who's going to fix our road? Are they collecting money to fix our road? Okay, I think uh, Kurt might have a side answer there. As a uh, construction will be developing in the North South area, the South North area will be having more trucks. So what you gotta do is, like we said, call the companies that have these trucks and ask them nicely, request it or whatever, for them to use a couple of parkway to come street down from off of Geiger Street down to the North South Road area. Because yeah, uh, there is five years right now, uh, trucking and some other companies in the, in the area that is using rented road. And, uh, and, and they said, I feel the same, same as you, is, 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 uh, and when having four or five trucks in a row, I don't think it's, it's adequate for them to be using that road. Though. But like I said, there's a company that you should actually get in touch with and ask them if there is a, Closer route because you figure that the meeting behind the, the by the church too, so the hall of the dirt from the development of the, the affordable homes, they have to haul it somewhere because they're not going to be able to do it now to the road in the back. So that's the kind of stuff that we're kind of we're stuck with. Where do we take the dirt? Where do we dump the dirt? That's that's the pattern that we're using that stuff. We're kids from, you know. Okay. So that's the kind of developers you got to check in. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, maybe we need to look at that a little bit closer. Are you going to get the guys to change their house? Okay, yeah, sorry. Um, I found out that I asked the wrong person about this, but the, the trees behind I pull a place were, right, in Westlock Fairways were cut by city workers in November. Um, why were they cut? And how are they going to be replaced? They were cut to the stump or trimmed? Cut down, cut down. Not trimmed, not, you know, not prone. They were cut down, down. Okay. And then that happened in November? Yes. Okay, I'll report next one. Okay, any other board members? Comments, questions? Okay. Uh, I have uh, two, Joyce, just as a uh, follow-up. Uh, this is from the uh, minutes of uh, last month. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, will, be, will the uh, EPA be giving a waiver for the uh, treatment plan? Uh, Michelle said uh, she would write that down and try to get a follow-up. Definitely will be. Yes. It's been a tentative decision. Okay. So that is coming. Okay. And... Uh, uh, extension of uh, time period or runs for the boat. Uh, right now they're running, I believe it's three out of uh, um, Kalilo Harbor to mm -hmm. town. Uh, nothing coming back until the afternoon. That's correct. As you know, the Rachel Marie is on dock um, and engine, we've continued to experience engine problems with the Rachel Marie, the Melissa, and continues to provide service. Um, while limited, and um, we continue to work with Hornblower, who's the contractor on this, uh, the boat, and 
the pilot the administration still continues to support the multimodal approach and that this pilot project um, we had hoped to provide an additional service and of course the concern at this point is reliability and we continue to try and address we are address the fact that we're one boat down um, alternatives are being considered but at this point I don't have um, a response to you as to what that final outcome or decision will be but um, the the, the, the return route is limited because of the one boat being down. Okay. Um, on the pilot project, I believe you started out with a one-year project mm -hmm. or one-year pilot project. Mm -hmm. uh, is the success with the boat now, uh, in, with the exception of the down boat that you have right now, mm -hmm. is that uh, moving along at a progress rate that they can uh, step up their time period, maybe in, in a six-month period? Well, uh, we're going to have to take a look at um, the statistics or the um, final out outcome of this pilot project to determine, I guess, what the next step is. And if you're asking me whether or not we'll, are you asking if we're going to continue service or if we're going to somehow make up for where? No, uh, well, what I'm really getting to is uh, what's the ridership looking like, uh, you know, opposed to the capacity? Okay. Is it carrying enough people to... Uh, uh, you know, I don't have those numbers with me tonight. Expedite but the, uh, the service. Because, I, and the reason I say that, I, I'm sure there's probably some people uh, in uh, West Tawago side that may be more interested if they probably could hear some numbers. I mean, we heard a lot about the boat mm -hmm. when it was first coming online, and then all of a sudden all that uh, publicity kind of died out. Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of curious of where it's at right now. And of okay. course, the uh, other avenue is once they start increasing service, mm -hmm. when, when can we look at the uh, pickups at uh, Airport Point? Okay, well, we continue to, on the last point, we continue to work with the Navy on um, the Airport Point uh, location or, or stop or pickup. Um, I'll be happy, I'll um, request the statistics on ridership and numbers you're asking for and report next month to the board on where that's at. Okay, that'd be good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, community, any uh, questions, concerns for the mayor's rep? Uh, one? As we're talking about the roads on Renton Road, we've got all these, oh, sorry. Uh, Chris Burke, I'm, um, as we talk about all the roads again, I'm, um, we've been three years without uh, crosswalk from the Kapolei Library to the park, which thousands of children uh, every weekend are out. I know it's kind of gone, we need a crosswalk but the roads are deteriorating as well all the way the trip from Barbers Point through Geiger Road. Um, I don't know if that's state or federal, but I know a lot of people are using that road and a lot of traffic today was backed up from all the way from the Kapolei Police Station all the way through Barbers Point, bumper to bumper. And if you could possibly, I know we don't have much policemen here, we're trying to recruit some, if at peak times we can get a police officer at the intersection to direct traffic, um, just to flow things, so if we go a little bit more quickly, smoothly, whatever, but main thing in front of the Copley Library, which my daughter's written letters to the Mary, we've gotten some answers back. Not, my nine-year-old daughter is so happy, and neither am I with what we've gotten back, as well as the, you know, uh, other situations over there, but just some type of thing that make people safe walking from a library to the park if we could, and I've seen nothing done. And also, okay. like I say, the, the roads. Another unreal yeah. thing, they're just tearing up the roads. I don't see, it's the same thing going in and on a coolie. You see 10, 18 wheelers going back and forth dumping trash. I don't, they should be paying some kind of tax so they can redo our roads. Okay, thank you. I, it was a request that was submitted last, or a couple months back on that crosswalk. DTS did report that that would be installed, but um, the exact time when that would be that work would be completed, I can um, follow up with DFM, who actually does the installation once DTS determines the crosswalk is warranted. So I'll be happy to um, find out where that's at. And as far as HPD uh, directing traffic, in the meantime, we'll go ahead and submit a request and the issue on Geiger Road potholes. Yeah. Okay. Good enough. Thank you. Uh, let me uh, let me uh, first uh, let me remind the uh, uh, all of the audience in, in this respect 
Anytime the mayor's rep comes up, um, usually she asks us to put something in writing. I would like to encourage each of you to do the same. That will help her uh, with the language that you're looking at and, and giving a little direction, more direct information to addressing those issues for you. And then as in the past, she'll be able to uh, uh, answer those for you. We do have forms on the table over here by the door and you can pick those up and if you can get them either to uh, NOLA, uh, we'll get them to the Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Joyce, thank you very much. Okay, uh, can I not again? Freeze. Oh. Right, we're, we're, we're coming down to the wire here and uh, actually I think their time limit is up. <laughs> Good. Okay. Council Member Paul. You've heard from me a bunch tonight, so I'm happy to hear I'll just take any questions and focus on what you guys want to talk about. Okay. All right, board members, anything quickly? Uh -huh. All right. Uh, Anybody from the audience has anything for Councilman Paul? All right. Happy New Year again. Thank you very much and, uh, and for enduring your patience here. Okay. And uh, is Tommy Johnson in tonight? Oh, Tom Reed. I'm sorry. I wasn't told. Okay. Happy New Year and again, thank you for your patience. And uh, we're trying to move through uh, as quickly as possible here. We're right down to the end of the wire, so to speak. Happy New Year. Uh, Tommy, uh, his daughter's birthday is today, so uh, I'm going to the night. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, we're reminded that the governor's state, state address is January 22nd at 10 a.m. And at that point, she'll unveil the uh, administration's 2008 legislative package. She's had a very successful year with the administration. Uh, during this last year, she launched the Hawaii Innovation Initiative and still education remains a top priority. And some of the new laws that will be uh, effective for 2008 Act 110, which eases the unemployment insurance tax burden on uh, business in Hawaii uh, by lowering the taxable wage base. In the interest of time, if there's any questions. I think it, this would be appropriate to bring up. Uh, we have communications from the executive branch, the governor with the Department of Transportation. I'd like at this time to bring attention to the board members that there's a report here. There are two pages from uh, an email correspondence from Brendan Morioka, the interim Department of Transportation director. And I'd like these uh, two pages, which is actually double-sided, to be included into meeting minutes of tonight. Thank you. Okay, any other board members? All right, community? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Senator Espero? Good evening, board members, members of the audience. Um, I'd like to begin by just um, clarifying, I think there's been some confusion. Um, a couple meetings ago, um, it was commented that I had moved my beliefs. But just what work and everything done behind closed doors, I think the nature of the crime is such that it should be within the public domain. I'm also introducing another bill that in that type of situation, if the youth is found guilty, now the big fear in this case is as a 15 year old, if he's tried in family court and found guilty, he could be out by his 19th birthday. So I'll be introducing legislation that if that type of scenario does occur, that the Department of Public Safety, the state, can hold him longer than his 19th birthday. And I just, I have in my bill a figure of up to 26 years old where he'd be transferred to adult prisons. Um, there's a little controversy in this measure, but I think it is a measure that definitely deserves the discussion. I'm also looking at um, a measure to bring home our women prisoners. We have 175 women in Kentucky. 
and I believe that they do better in the rehabilitation and reentry if they came home. Um, I, I heard the beep. Uh, I'll close with three environmental bills I'm looking at. One would be promoting more solar water heating units in our new developments. Another one would be looking at promoting at, um, electric cars. And the third one would ban the sale of incandescent light bulbs or your regular light bulbs uh, by the end of this year. And, and go to the LEDs because um, those automatically, uh, a family will have a cost savings. And please feel free to call my office if you'd like more information on that. But going to LED, LEDs is, is the way to go. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, Tom. Uh, last, to keep it short. Last month, we went into UH West Oahu was here, and the board had entertained back and forth on the flyover. As you know, in the in the Red Cup Village report, we have Brenda Morioka stating about the flyover not applicable for the state, but yet the city and county could do such. So should the Ampo Policy Committee Chair, would you be so kind to uh, come back next month and let us know if you're able to put that on either the stiff or the tip or the amend any ORTP that's coming down the pipe while you're still chair? I could look into that, but it's not as easy as we're just going to put it on the tip. You know, the city has to support it, other officials have to support it, and there has to be a plan for it. Um, but the idea obviously is a good one, but whether we can actually do it within the next year, I cannot say. Okay, good. Um, Scott? Uh, uh, Senator, thank you for the report. It was actually me who had asked that question a few months ago. Um, the statement was having moved you into an apartment in town. I was wondering if you could tell the board how your proximity to the power base in town has benefited the community. I guess the specific question is have you ever stayed at the apartment in town and not returned to home the district? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have slept there. Okay. <laughs> I, I would just observe that when you when you choose to represent at the beach, and I had the same conversation with uh, Jamie there earlier who stays in town. Uh, every day when voters come home in traffic, they say to themselves, why isn't this better? Why aren't my elected officials doing more? And every morning when voters get in their vehicles and drive to work, they say, this is miserable. Why aren't my elected officials doing more? So this is only my own opinion, but I think that for every night, that someone who either serves in the office of a representative in this district or is actually in a Okay, can we cut it short? Every night that they do not stay in this district, they don't represent the district. Okay, thank okay. you. I think you made your point. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns? Okay, thank you, Senator. Thank you. Uh, House of Reps, uh, Kevin Dillon. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We're not uh, tonight and good luck to all of you. Thank you for sitting there for four hours. I know it's late, it's 10 o'clock. And by the way, Tom Burke, if you want to go to the office at 7 a.m. Um, uh, for a long time, I haven't, uh, Glenn and I haven't agreed on something. But tonight, we agreed on something that, you know, the Phillies is something that I think that this board should be entertaining and be informed about. I went to the tech committee meeting and I, I heard about the Philia, so I, I asked the good councilwoman to come and make a presentation uh, in front of you. And the thing that I like about it, since I did not participate in the Q&A earlier, is that it will save us $2 billion, and I think $2 billion is a lot of money. And you know what $2 billion can buy for us? It can actually build us a new elevated reversible freeway with $2 billion. So, and uh, it, it can come to every piece. And the way I understood it, when I voted for the, uh, for the half a cent increase uh, for the GET tax, it was for mass to enable the city and towns, city council to build as a mass transit. And this really is qualifies for mass transit. And at that time, I thought mass transit is just for, for rail. And I found out now that it's not, there's other alternatives to it besides rail. Uh, in, uh, in, in my uh, report here, and I'm going back to the last page uh, about the other bills that I'm still pursuing um, at the legislature, and I am presenting it because I would like your support on it. Even though I'm the chair of international affairs, I'm committed to the district in pursuing ways to ease traffic congestion for us that work in town. And 
I welcome you to read my report and please support these efforts to relieve us from transportation. With that, if you have any questions, I'll take them. Okay, questions from the board? Anybody from the community? Glenn? Glenn. Uh, Mr. Chair, I don't, want, I don't want the public to get a wrong impression of me. <laughs> what you said to me. I there's a lot of things you don't understand, Glenn. Thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of things you don't understand. Okay, we're back to reality. Okay. All right. We love you, Glenn. All right, we're back to reality. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Representative. And Representative Pine? And well, good evening and you. happy new year. <laughs> nice to be back. Um, I just wanted this to be public. I sleep very close to the power base a lot of time on my couch at the state capitol. So just I want to get that out now. Okay. And now I have been asked to go back on finance as well as judiciary, and so I'll be sleeping there a lot. A um, couple of things. Um, three girls came to my house from the Lima Intermediate. Um, they're raising money to go to Washington DC to learn about government, which I, which I think is just amazing. Um, and they're doing it $5 at a time. So now they're gonna have a fundraiser on January 19th, um, which is gonna be a rummage rum sale and a, a food fundraiser. So I really hope we all go and support these kids who are working really hard. Um, but on the more official things, um, I'm getting back to you. I was supposed to meet with Kalani English today, but uh, he didn't get back in time. He's still out of town in another country somewhere. Um, so we're scheduling a follow-up meeting for you folks uh, to, for me to talk to him about the, your splintered paddle thing. Um, uh, the, the other thing is, um, I'm so glad that Center Square and I talked a little earlier, we're gonna really try to team up to really support Karen Trail. Um, the, the tragedy where this teenager murdered this, this woman in Ever Beach and, and some of my bills will be a little harsher, you know I'm Republican so <laughs> I can be a little harsher, um, but uh, hopefully by next Tuesday we'll have the finalized bill so that uh, maybe like Kevin Miller can look at it as well. Um, fireworks was a big problem uh, for my district. A uh, lot of calls more than ever before about people doing the bombs and the fireworks under the unauthorized time. Uh, you're only supposed to do fireworks for New Year's, on the evening of New Year's, not December 3rd, 20, 21st, you know, and today, tonight. Um, so I would like to introduce a bill that um, puts on harsher penalties for people who break the law, and I wanted to know what the board thought of that. Uh, board, any comments? Are there laws in the book, books already? Uh, yes, there is. And so do we have adequate police to enforce those laws? Oh, of course not. Do we need more laws than if we can't enforce the ones we already have? Well, it would be a lot more enforceable if we had stiffer penalties. Because when you do get caught, and there are people who get caught, they won't want to do it anymore. So the risk will be higher. It's my observation from reading every account from the police that it's nearly impossible to actually enforce it because you can't actually videotape it. So my, my opinion as a board member is we don't need more laws. Well, I, I agree with you. I do agree with you to a certain extent. But I also believe that it has gotten out of control in Ever Beach. And these people have disrespected, especially those who are elderly, those um, who especially have uh, family members who have Alzheimer's have been calling me. Uh, parents who are kid, have kids that have autism have been calling me. People who have dogs have been calling me, saying that they don't even go outside the bathroom anymore because of this, and it's been going on for a long time. And so, to me, it's more, I agree with you that it, it could be complicated in terms of enforcing it, but I do believe we need to send a message that we're sick and tired of these people breaking the law. Okay. Um, any other board members? Gary? I just want to put it up for a shade, and I said, why put more laws in here? Well, thank you. This is why I come to you to see if you want to do anything about it. Okay. Community? Kurt? <coughs> 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 
necessary uh, making stricter laws is to change the laws on how the police enforce these illegal houses. Um, you know, now you gotta, they gotta see them. Even though I'm willing to testify, bring my video camera, that's nothing. We gotta change the law on how they can prosecute these people that are doing the illegal bomb in the area. It's been going down from the 80s. It's escalating even now. Of course, like, even if you do house, the thing is just, it's just, it's just un unbelievable sound. So the laws have to change on how the police enforce them. Because two bombs go off, boom, boom. Okay? 911, I think it's called 911, right? Because everybody's scared. Then 25 in a row go off after. How can you not catch that house? But the police are really from their way, right? 25. You gotta go right to the house. You're standing up. But why? Because the laws restrict them in going into the person's backyard and arresting the guy who won't like the fireworks. And then they will say, oh, I did not fall from the neighbor's house. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to change the law of how the police can enforce these fireworks and then trace it back to the companies that let these people house it in Kulana Village, on the Lord Street, Kawiki, Ever Beach Road, Poakapuna, and so far and so on. If also so that they can be penalties all the way down from the household down. You know, make it, make it so that, that that's how it goes. The police have more, more uh, leeway when it comes to that kind of stuff. Because one time a house will blow up and a lot of guys will die. You know what I mean? So that's, that's what you have to do. change the law on how it comes to the police. Well, you need a fireworks. Huh? Okay. Actually, Kurt, thank you so much. That's a very good suggestion. Yeah. I didn't think about that. I'm going to look into that a little more. Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, Thank you. one quickie for me. Um, the uh, quickie from me. Uh, uh, earlier, and I knew you were here earlier, uh, we talked about the uh, North South Road, and I understand that uh, you had uh, some correspondence and went out to uh, uh, hopefully encourage the people to cut back the uh, trees and the rubbish. Or, uh, Over the North the Road. Villages. Yes, North Road, we haven't gotten a response yet. You okay. know, the holidays kind of put a lot of people back, people were back and forth at different places, and so we're still trying to get a formalized answer. You know, with, this, uh, with the uh, marathon coming up, mm -hmm. um, I understand that uh, they're going to be running that road. Um, the gentleman, uh, Steve, that was here indicated that in last year he had cut back personally himself some of that stuff, uh, whatever is out there. I personally haven't been there, so I couldn't tell you, but... Uh, well, he said he filled the potholes. Yeah, I'm sorry, he said he filled the potholes, yeah. So uh, uh, maybe because of the Marathon Association, we can get some support with you and hopefully take care of that for the residents in our area. That would be really great. I really think that the neighborhood board should call the new owners um, to come and talk to you. Because new owners of? Of, of the, Eva, the, the Eva Golf Course. Of the International Golf Course. Yeah. yeah. Because we've been working on this issue for three years. Well, if they're not responding to you, I don't know how they're going to respond to them. Well, I, I think we should, we should work on it as a team. When you work as a team on things, things are very that. successful. It's just that they changed owners and we have to start over again. Yeah. And I don't want this to be a slow process. They have a new owner, new, 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 new um, yeah, president now. Maybe all of our elected officials, we can get together and collectively approach them and hopefully get this uh, solved. Kurt, last one. Um, a few minutes more um, before I even got off, um, Jeff's not here. Um, what they did was they had a letter and they continued on, on the stipulations and the fines that we implemented either by the city or the state or the, or the military, in fact, because it's dangerous. It, it, it has it in people that goes to the military. But it had something in, in, on, in writing. Like she said, they keep changing, but that's an excuse. You know what I'm saying? Because they know the landscapers that work the golf course know that that's part of their property. And the landscaping comes outside that fence and they're supposed to do it. The landscaping person that lives in the community, that's the manager, refuses to go out there and take his man out there to do it. It's nothing to do with even the higher ups of the golf course. It's the manager that runs the golf course, landscaping, refuse to go out there because they say when they cut them, they find dead animals, car parts, uh, uh, bicycle parts, all the kind of stolen items. So they don't want to have the liability of their workers getting hurt or smell something stink. That's the problem. It's nothing to do with their higher ups. It's a, a thing I'm down. I thought you could go, 
and you refuse to do them. They don't follow up on you. Look how long it's growing already. You know what I'm saying? If you refuse to do them, they change management how many times. But the one that runs the golf course, landscaping, is still the same guy. The same guy. And you've been there since. Well, we used to have our Lions Club meeting there. That's okay. Mr. Beaman. All right, good. So, uh, again, maybe we can get together and uh, hopefully take care of that. Okay. Uh, nothing else? I'm sorry. Did you? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. If there is uh, no objections to the board, uh, I'd like to adjourn. All right. Meeting adjourned.